All right, guys, really quickly, sorry for the video lag. My whole system is coming crashing down, but I got something real exciting coming up this Sunday, tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this. Um, we're going to be doing a live stream of the Ravens game. Not the game itself, but uh, Coach Hahn is going to be doing live breakdowns, a play-by-play -play breakdown, not just live reactions of, oh, my goodness, look what happened. If you're a Ravens fan and you want to check out what's going on on a play-by-play -play basis, watching him break it down, you're going to want to be here and check out that live stream. I've got a little in intro video just to give you a taste of what it's going to be like tomorrow. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hey, what's up, Ravens fans? My name is Coach Hawn. I like to do a little bit of side work for a website called Packernet.com and also some of the support for the podcast called Packernet Podcast. So usually I'm used to doing these film breakdowns down here in my little film dungeon, um, but I usually do them for the Green Bay Packers or their opponents. However, I got the opportunity to start taking a look at some of the Ravens offensive line, and I got to tell you, like, this is Unreal. This is so much fun. So I thought I'd maybe share with you three different plays I saw from the Bengals game that shows you just why they're so very difficult to scheme against and game plan against defensively because this O-line is awesome. So the very first play we're going to take a look at here, we're going to start to identify how defenses start to see some of these offensive formations from Baltimore and how the Baltimore Ravens attack the way the, the defense aligns to the formations. So at first, I know the screen looks hectic and crazy right now, but I'll try to explain it. What we always do defensively is try to draw a line down the center because we never know if the center goes left or right. Therefore, we have to account for him in each sides of the ball's blocking schemes. So if we take a look at the defense is left, the offense is right. The defense has four defenders on this side of the ball, and the offense could have a possibility if the center goes to his right, defense is left, they could have four potential blockers here with the center, the right guard, right tackle, and this attached tight end. So the numbers are even over here. Now, if we take a look at the offense's left, the defense is right, we can see that the defense has six defenders here, the sixth being the stacked cornerback over the top of the tight end attached to the line here. And the Ravens at this point could possibly have six with the center the left guard, left tackle, the slot tight end, and then the attached receiver to the line. So either way you look at it, the Bengals have done a nice job of evening the count out, okay? Or making it so that Baltimore, either way they go, they have man-on-man -man blocking schemes. So what does Baltimore do? This is so cool. They find creative little ways, and they go a little bit old school in their ways to try to match that and then go plus one to one side or the other. So first they'll send the motion um, across the formation here. And you'll notice that bumps the inside linebackers alignment. As the motion starts, you're going to notice these inside linebackers bump to adjust for that motion, to adjust for that possibility of the of the offense adding a plus one to the backside. And then I know this gets to be a just a jumbled mess right here, but what the Ravens are going to do is pull two backside offensive linemen so that they get more hats to the play side. It's essentially taking dudes away from one side of the ball, adding them to the other so that now they have the numbers game in their favor. Okay, so everybody on the left side of the Ravens offensive line blocks down, and then they pull these two in what's called buck sweep. Okay, so the right guard and then the right additional tackle are going to both go ahead, or excuse me, um, the center here snapping the ball, which is unlikely to see, but the center and the right tackle go ahead and pull around in this scheme and you get more hats to the ball. Therefore, they're now up one blocker here. And now the only unblocked defender is way out here on the edge, creating that force. Now it's not a huge gain. It's a gain of seven yards, but it's a really smart way for the Ravens to use some formational and play calling stuff to start to steal some of the, those yards and make the defense play gap sound up front. It stops the from stealing gaps, essentially. So kind of a cool thing here as well, just another way that they try to steal some yards and steal some gaps from the defense is they make them miss a line. And they do this with, this is awesome. They do this out of what's called an unbalanced set when they have an extra O lineman on the field. So you standardly play with five O linemen. Well, they've decided that one of their extra offensive linemen, number 67, is going to become eligible here. So what they've done now is gone super unbalanced or what we call a jumbo set. So right here is the center with this arrow right here, okay? Notice they only have a guard backside, and then they have a tight end and a stacked fullback, so a wing or a stacked fullback look. So they don't even have a tackle on this side. Instead, they have a right guard, 
a right tackle, an extra right tackle, and oh, by the way, another extra right tackle. So now all of a sudden, if you draw that line down the center again, you have five dudes going to the right side who's who literally make a living blocking. You you don't have a, a liability as far as a tight end or a fullback or a wide receiver who do some of these skill positions over here. You've got five offensive linemen to one side of the ball and only one backside, which is awesome. So what are you going to do? Well, sure, you're going to take all those dudes and block down, and you're going to pull the one lineman that you had on the other side of the ball around, and you're going to get just more hats to the ball than Cincinnati has the ability to get defenders. So again, it's only a gain of five, but you're stealing yards. You're creating essentially what are called layups. You're making it really, really easy for your offense to get into second and five or third and one, and you're staying what's called ahead of the chains. It's super cool. Now, the last play I have to show you is just unfair offensively. This is just nuts because as if it's not hard enough for you as a defensive coordinator to now have to align to unbalanced formations, now have to figure out ways to attack pullers because uh, Baltimore is trying all these different ways to get more hats to the ball. Now you add in this dude who is absolute dynamite with the ball in his hands. We all know that. But now you come out of an empty formation, so you got a light box already by Cincinnati. You bring some motion across in a fly sweep look, and you pull a guard. You've got a guard coming around, and he's going to fill in here. So what's really, really cool about all of this is it's just a read play for, for uh, Lamar Jackson here. Okay, All he's doing when he catches that snap on this jet look coming across is he's just reading this play side inside linebacker. If this play side inside backer has to go and respect the jet sweep and he starts to take a couple of steps to his left, our offensive right, then Lamar Jackson's just going to tuck the ball and follow his pulling guard through the hole. If this dude wants to go ahead and insert in the hole and take on that pulling guard, well, then he's a number up and he's just going to hand off this sweep. So we'll watch it happen here where he takes a couple of steps with his eyes glued right to this play side inside backer. As he starts to vacate, then he just tucks behind his pulling guard. And if we could have gotten this block here, Look at what's happening. You've got a crack going downfield on a safety. You've got a really nice job by this number 13. I don't even know who he is, but he's fit up really well here. Now, Lamar Jackson has two different angles that he could theoretically take this sucker to the house. It doesn't happen here. 77 gets shocked and shed by that Mike, that backside inside linebacker, but still just an unbelievable way. And this is just three plays that I found. That Oh man, the Ravens do such a great job with their offensive line scheme wise to put defenses in conflict. I really cannot wait to watch this Ravens Titans wildcard game coming up. And speaking of that, if this type of stuff is something you like, I'll be doing this stuff live as I watch the Ravens Titans game and giving you some breakdowns as far as defense and offensive philosophies so that you can take a look live while the game is going on. And during like commercial breaks or halftime or something, if you got a question, you can just simply type it into YouTube live and I'll do my best to answer it. We did it last week with the Packers Bears game. A lot of people really enjoyed it. So I would love to invite you to do it. The way you do that is by subscribing to Pack Daddy NFL. Okay. Subscribe to him on YouTube. That's where I'll end up streaming this stuff through. And we'll just have a great time looking at this super fun offense. But until then, again, my name is Coach Hawn with Packernet.com. I would love to see you guys for that wild card game. Give me your questions and then I'll ask you about personnel stuff because I don't know hardly any of these guys. So I'll be leaning on you as well. Okay. Thanks for hanging out with me. Take care.